Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years. Hi, I'm Cherry Johnson, Watauga County Arts Council, and I uh, want to kind of introduce you to a whole new direction. Um, the Arts Council, let me go back and say that we are in the Blue Ridge Art Space, I think you know that. And in that space, we have some meeting space, and many, many arts groups are discovering that they can come and have their regular meetings there. Uh, one of those is High Country Writers. And so through High Country Writers, or through a meeting that they had, I met uh, the lady that's with me today. This is Danielle, let me see if I can say this, Bassoni? Bassoni. Ah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she, um, well, I told her she has a checkered past. Um, she had originally been a painter back in the day. And you were a full-time professional painter, is that yes, correct? Yes, I was a professional artist. Right? Okay, and you had studied in various places around the world, I think mm -hmm. you said. And I've shown in uh, Tokyo, I've shown in, in Europe, I've, mm -hmm. you know, and of, cor of course across the United States. Uh, I'm a real, I was a realist, and I am still a realist painter. I uh, studied with a very fine painter in France at uh, Ecole Albert de Foix, and it was a, uh, an atelier, uh, and uh, we were a group of realist painters, so I got a very good education there. That's cool. But then you retired the paintbrush, or mostly retired it. I have. I have a. Um, I haven't picked it up again. I'm not saying that I never will, but my life is so busy now. You're I just taken a new direction. It has. <laughs> I have. I've taken a new direction. Um, I became very ill, mm -hmm. and uh, I had a surgical procedure where the doctor cut the wrong thing. <laughs> and Everybody's nearly, nightmare. That's right, mm -hmm. and he nearly killed me, and it took me, uh, for five years, I spent most of my time just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. uh, I had many hospitalizations, many procedures, and many complications, and several of those were life-threatening. Wow. Um, yeah. So it totally gave you a whole different perspective on life and changed your time that you had to give, too, and energy. Because right. I'm sure that you did not feel like painting at that point. No, I couldn't uh -huh. paint. I, I, mm -hmm. I simply didn't have the, the strength. Uh, six years ago, I was so frail, I couldn't make it down a grocery store aisle holding onto a shopping cart. I had to have a 94-year-old friend of mine do my shopping for me because I simply couldn't do it. That's interesting. That really makes you feel helpless, doesn't it? <laughs> I was helpless. <laughs> I was absolutely helpless. So then, um, at, tell me how, how this all came about now. You, you, have, you were very ill. You finally discovered something that made a big, big difference in your life. Well, I had um, I had, had a lot of, uh, I, I was left with a lot of pain. I had mm -hmm. terrible gastric pain from, from several abdominal surgeries. And there just didn't seem to be any end in sight. And... Um, and I, re I reached a point where I thought, if this is going to be my life, then I just don't want it. Mm -hmm. And I had a friend introduce me to a book by T. Colin Campbell called The China Study. And this was, the, this was about the largest cohort study ever done on mm -hmm. nutrition. And uh, the scientist in this study uh, looked at populations that, had, uh, that lived very long lives that were virtually disease-free. Mm -hmm. And what they discovered that these populations had in common were that they, uh, they lived on a vegetarian diet and with little or no animal protein. Uh -huh. And populations that had uh, uh, adopted a Western diet had uh, uh, cancers, autoimmune diseases, heart disease, obesity, mm -hmm. uh, you know, diabetes, all of the diseases of modern Western civilization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and another thing that really piqued my curiosity in this book was that uh, Campbell did some research with rats in which he was literally able to turn cancer on and off and on again. That's fascinating. It, it was uh -huh. fascinating. And he did this simply by adjusting the amount of animal protein that he fed them. Mm -hmm. And so have, in addition to my other medical issues, I had also had skin cancer. I'd had a melanoma, which is a life-threatening right. cancer, and carcinoma. And so I realized that it was time for me to change. And so I... I immediately went on a uh, plant-based diet. My uh -huh. husband and I got rid of every animal product in our house. Mm -hmm. And in one day, the gastric pain that I'd been suffering from for years, I mean, excuse me, for months, uh, mm -hmm. had, uh, it simply went away. And huh. with, within three weeks, I was off of blood pressure medication I'd been on for 12 years and was expected to take for life. Wow. I no longer had ga acid reflux. Uh, my cholesterol dropped to a, to a healthy low. I, all I, this in three weeks? 
Yeah, within three weeks. Wow. And, uh, and I, and I uh, started losing weight. Mm -hmm. And so over a period of time, I lost 65 pounds eating anything I wanted. Whoa. And it, yeah, it was fantastic. I started, I was able to eat foods I couldn't tolerate before, like peppers and onions and garlics and things that used to give me a lot of trouble. I could eat them with impunity now. And so um, I have become a dedicated vegan. <laughs> you know, pain was a great motivator uh -huh. for me and, and, the, and the results were immediate. And so, uh, so I took uh, Cornell's program in plant-based nutrition mm -hmm. and I started cooking and I uh, creating recipes and learning more about plant-based nutrition. Mm -hmm. And so I've written this book so that I can share it with, right. and this with is other the people. Book. This is, it's called Time for Change and you can see why she called it time for change. Uh, and then the rest of it says whole foods for whole health. Right. And in this book, and I've, I've only gotten it a copy today, but, mm -hmm. but in this book I've already noticed she, she tells her story about what happened and then about how the things change. But then you end with a lot of wonderful recipes. Mm -hmm. That, so you really get a cookbook in the in the deal here because it gets you started on this kind of a lifestyle. It's with, a yeah. the, it's a pretty comprehensive mm -hmm. book uh, about transitioning to a plant based diet. Gotcha. It tells my story and and how I was able to resolve uh, my issues with a plant based diet, and also uh, I go into why someone should consider becoming a mm -hmm. uh, becoming mm -hmm. vegan. And I should mention that vegan and plant based aren't necessarily the same thing. Oh. I often tell people I'm vegan just because it's easier because th that, you know, everybody knows what that means, mm -hmm. that I don't eat meat. But you can have a very unhealthy vegan diet. You know, Coca-Cola and French fries are technically vegan. <laughs> I thought about that. <laughs> yeah, they're technically <laughs> vegan, but you won't thrive on that kind of diet. Uh, the foods that I'm talking about are foods that are prepared in a way that, that uh, for one thing, they're whole foods. Mm -hmm. They have all of their nutrients intact, right. and they're pre prepared in a way that preserves their nutrients. Mm -hmm. And they're absolutely delicious. You know, uh, it, it isn't about salads and tofu and wheatgrass, you know. <laughs> Which is what everybody thinks. That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. That's right. It's very delicious food. Um, and you can take most of your recipes that, uh -huh. uh, that you're accustomed to eating and tweak a few things, change a few ingredients, and you can still enjoy those recipes. So now you've kind of gone from painting as an art form mm -hmm. to not just writing, which I've noticed you, it seems to be very well written from what Thank part you. I've seen, but also uh, you're going into the culinary arts mm -hmm. and, and really exploring that as an art form, I think, you know, more than just feeding yourself. You know? Oh, absolutely. And then you're also, you and your husband, I understand, uh, check out various vegan restaurants here and there, and you write a blog. I do. I have uh -huh. a blog. We've got 32,000 followers on Twitter wow. now. Yeah, and we've got about, I think, a little over 1,100 on uh -huh. Facebook. And uh, we we review restaurants. Uh, we we started this blog because we discovered it's difficult to find a place where you can eat mm -hmm. when you're when you're a vegan mm -hmm. or or when you're whole foods plant based, which is what right. I consider myself. Uh -huh. And so we decided to create a resource so other people can find these places and and that we could draw attention to these pl deserving places. They need that, and we've also uh, managed to influence other people, uh, some of these restaurants into offering plant-based options uh -huh. because there's a market for it. Right. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, veganism has finally become cool. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, even Chipotle's mm -hmm. is offering plant-based options, and now uh, other fast food places are jumping in on that very profitable right. uh, mm -hmm. plant-based bandwagon. Mm -hmm. And it's even got a name. It's called the Chipotle Effect. Oh. <laughs> I heard that one. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so uh, so so more people are asking for these foods, so more more people are offering them. Right, right. And so now, what you're doing is is you're you're exploring this whole new section of your life, you mm -hmm. know, which really. And you even told me you're taking photographs of your recipes or whatever mm -hmm. for your blog. Yes, so I'm so learning food yeah. photography. So now she's doing a photography. She's writing. She's mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're even starting into the publishing field, looking into that. So, yes, I know. do have a. I have started a publishing company. I, I also do fiction writing. Wow. Yeah. So there's a whole. You know what it shows me is that the artist never goes away. Oh no! It you it just, just expand it in different areas. In different areas. ways, exactly. Now let's talk about more specific about this whole lifestyle because I think mm -hmm. people are interested in this. 
First question I want to ask you is what happens when you change? What does your body, I mean, you had good effects, but how did it feel? Well, you, there are two ways that you can go plant-based. Mm -hmm. You can do it all at once. Mm -hmm. I call it the tortoise and the hare. You know, you can, <laughs> you can do it all at once and, and go cold turkey, uh -huh. so to speak, which may not be an appropriate term for plant-based, but... Seriously. <laughs> we got to think of a new one for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is what I did, and I did it because pain was a big motivator. Now, uh, you can have some side effects to that. You can, your body can go through a detox pr uh, mm -hmm. process, which could take uh, up to two weeks to recover from. It's like having a mild flu. Uh, and it's like I told you, when I went off of caffeine during a pregnancy, mm -hmm. Uh, there was a definite period there where I did not feel good. You yeah, know? you can uh -huh. feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks. Uh, it's recommended that you eat beans every day because mm -hmm. they're so good for you. And uh, My it, husband will be glad to hear that one. Uh, beans are very, very <laughs> good for beans. you. <laughs> and they, they help with digestion. They help lower... Uh, uh -huh. um, it, they help with the sugar spikes. Right. Uh, their beans are fantastic for you, but of course, you know, beans come with gas. Mm -hmm. But once you get accustomed to eating beans every day, that, prob acclimates. that problem mm -hmm. goes away. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, but you can also do it slowly. Even, even if you're only, you know, you have to do it in a way that is uh, comfortable for you and sustainable mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. you. Because it's it's not a diet; it's a lifestyle, and yeah. uh, and it's a lifestyle that will make you well. If you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always gotten: mm -hmm. more disease, mm -hmm. more uh, pain, more weight gain. You right. know, and and you have to reach a point where you've had enough of that. And I actually know someone very close to me that has adopted a similar diet or a, a, a variation of that. And every now and then, this person will on a special occasion eat something that normally they would not eat. Mm -hmm. And they'll usually say, I'm probably going to pay for this, but I'm going to go ahead and eat mm -hmm. this right now, you know. And right. so, so this is not like, it's not like once you go there, you can never, ever, ever have something, but you just may not choose to. Well, that's right, because you'll find that your body has its own wisdom. Mm -hmm. We've just crammed it full of so much right. junk that uh -huh. it, you can't get a word in right. edgewise. <laughs> and, uh, and the secret to there's a secret that I'll share with you is that once your body become the better you are to your mm -hmm. body, the better your body requires that you be to it. Mm. Once you get used to not eating animal protein, your body will complain when you try to feed it to the, right. to it, and uh, and the, and also the more you choose. Uh, products without animal mm -hmm. food, you know, the more you choose plant-based or mm -hmm. healthy products, mm -hmm. uh, the more you're likely to start craving them and the better you feel and the more likely you're going to want them again and again. Mm -hmm. you, you lose your taste for animal protein very quickly. Interesting. It okay. took me three weeks. Uh, and and after, you just had no desire for it. I, I not only had no desire for it, it was completely unappetizing. Hmm. And I think you could put a gun to my head today and I, could, I wouldn't <laughs> eat a piece of meat. I, I absolutely do, don't want it and I know how harmful it is to my body, to mm -hmm. all of the cells in my body. Everything improves when you get animal protein out of your system. That's interesting. Really fascinating. Um, so now um, you, you talk about plant-based and vegan and you said there's some differences? Well, the difference is that, uh, you know, and I explained before, the difference is that eating whole foods in there, and, and these don't have to be raw. Mm -hmm. You can certainly mm -hmm. cook. You know, a lot of people think you have to go raw, and you don't, uh, because a lot of foods don't even release their nutrients until they're cooked. Right. Like tomatoes don't release lycopene until they're cooked. Mm -hmm. And I... Uh, uh, but All you, my raw tomatoes aren't helping me on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're good, and they're not going to hurt you. Uh, but and they still have fiber, mm -hmm. and they still have other nutrients. And uh, but the but the thing is, is you just want to eat foods that still contain all their right. their uh, original properties. Like uh -huh. you don't want to eat white rice because everything's been stripped from it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to eat white flour because everything's been stripped from it. So you eat whole grains, mm. you know, whole okay. whole foods. Now. Um, you talk about going out to restaurants and that kind of thing, and you said it's getting easier to find this kind of food. It is, uh, and if you don't, you know, it's it's better if you learn to cook for yourself, mm -hmm. because studies show that pe people who prepare their own foods at home right. live longer and healthier than people mm -hmm. who don't, regardless of the kinds of foods they cook, mm -hmm. because when you cook for yourself, you know what you're putting into your right. food, and you automatically make healthier choices. Mm -hmm. um, 
but if you know yourself well enough to know that you're, you don't want to cook, you're never going to go near a kitchen for any reason, <laughs> then you can, at least, you can at least look for healthier options when you're out. Right. And there are a lot of restaurants that now uh, offer delicious, healthy options. In this area, uh, Hobnobs is a great place to get oh, a, yeah. that's a great place that. to get a good vegan mm -hmm. meal. Mint is a good place uh -huh. to get a, get a good, they have a huge selection of delicious vegan foods. Uh -huh. uh, Thai restaurants are good places. Vietnamese, I don't know if you have that in this area. I'm not aware of one. But, but ethnic uh -huh. foods are fantastic mm -hmm. because um, a lot of these cultures have fasting days in which they're not allowed to eat animal products, so they already know how to make these wonderful foods. Uh, you don't have okay. to go in and say, can you make something vegan for me? It's on the menu. I get you. Uh, mm -hmm. South India mm -hmm. is largely vegetarian, so Indian restaurants are a sure place where you can get good vegan foods. Now, here's a challenge for you. I work very strange odd hours mm -hmm. and long hours, and many times I'm eating at my desk. Mm -hmm. What options would I have in this besides a salad? <laughs> Which I do do a salad a lot, but besides that, what, what other options can you think of that I could do that's not a pre-prepared food or a, you know, something? If I haven't had the time or the luxury of fixing at home and bringing something to warm up, you know what I'm saying? Well, I think, I think if, if you're not going to prepare it yourself, then obviously you have to get it from somewhere. Uh -huh. So I would just go get takeout at one of these great restaurants. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, do the grocery stores offer anything in that line that's a, that's a you know, something you can... Some do. Earth the, Fair, yeah, uh -huh, Earth uh -huh. Fair uh, often has uh, uh, vegan takeout. Right. Uh, they have a whole bar of things that you right. can, you can uh -huh. pick and choose from. Uh, I don't know really of other places in this area. Well, I'm thinking I, about things like peanuts are a good option. You know, it's oh, yeah, a good are, energy source when you're yeah, busy and working and, you know, almonds especially, mm -hmm. you know. Certainly, um, certainly there are trail mixes and things like that that you can get. That are get. nutritious and good for you and, and not full of anything else you don't want, mm -hmm. you know. I was telling her that I had watched a special recently uh, that really I wasn't currently aired. It was an older special on... Uh, sugar and the amount of sugar that's in our diets and the sugar that is hidden that mm -hmm. we don't see or taste mm -hmm. or we don't realize we taste it and how that a lot of it's there to entice us mm -hmm. to get us to eat the product you know uh, my brother works with us uh, my brother works in dc and he, mm -hmm. he works with a man who recently lost a huge amount of weight and he asked him how he lost it and he said i gave up sodas and yeah. that's all he did yeah. was give up sodas mm -hmm. Yeah, this special talked about how much sugar was in just one soda, mm -hmm. you know, that you would drink. And uh, it was pretty astounding, you know. So, and, and then and I think that the major food producers need to work with us on this, mm -hmm. you know, and give us better options. Well, the way, to, the way to make those changes happen is by voting with your wallet. If you refuse to buy these mm -hmm. foods, they'll disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. if you demand labeling, proper right. labeling, if you right. demand labeling for GMOs, GMOs will disappear, genetically modified organisms. Mm -hmm. In Europe, they're gone. Well, and you know, even 25 years ago, you never found any restaurants or of any description that would give you the caloric content or anything like that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that, that information was unavailable. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, it's not that uncommon to be able to access that kind of information. Mm -hmm. So our, our society is making changes in some not ways. Not fast enough, yeah. 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 We are making That's some right. changes, yeah. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention uh -huh. is if you're considering uh, adopting a plant-based lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, there are wonderful ways to go about doing that. Really? If, if you don't know how to cook, taking a local cooking class is mm -hmm, a good way mm -hmm. uh, because you'll be in a class with people in the same boat as you right? Uh, that, and you'll be learn to work with new ingredients that you've never experienced mm -hmm. before like quinoa mm -hmm. and black rice and chia seeds. I had no idea what those things were or how to use them. Uh -huh. and, uh, and you get to eat your mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you like them or not, and you learn new <laughs> you learn new cooking methods. But another way is to join a local vegan meetup group. That's right. You told me that there was mm -hmm. such a thing in Boone now. There is a fantastic. As a matter of fact, it's the best one I've seen, mm -hmm. and it's called Veg Boone. Uh -huh. And you can go to vegboon.com and see see when they're having a local potluck. It's free. Uh, the cost of your uh, meeting is just a potluck dish. You bring something that. Would you be intimidated if you don't know what you're doing on this? Well, if you can't, if you really can't cook, go to Earth Fair and pick something up. They'll there you have go. something. Okay. But uh, but you bring a dish that will.
will feed mm -hmm. six to eight people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's fantastic because you'll walk in and there'll be a spread of something like 30 dishes and everybody brings their recipe. So you and know what it is that you're eating. You yeah. know what you're uh -huh. eating, you know whether or not you like it, and now you have the recipe so you can go home and make it yourself. That's one of my big frustrations, even at covered dish meals and mm -hmm. so forth, is that, you know, it's great, but what is it? Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah and there are people who have gluten sensitivities mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. you can't use honey, you know, even right. at, even honey, you can't use honey as a sweetener, no animal products at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it's a fantastic way to, to meet people who are, uh, you know, like minded people, people, right. they're very uh -huh. supportive. You don't have to be a vegan. You can be just veg curious and come to mm -hmm. one of these meetings. It's run by uh, Jeannie and Larry Kaiser mm -hmm. and they're fantastic people Good. and very welcoming. Nobody's uh -huh. pushy. Nobody's going to try to force you to do anything. Check you don't see if you ate something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, you won't be bringing anything wrong to this group, but, but it's a fantastic group of people and they're, they're from all walks of life and all ages. A lot of young people there and a lot That's of older people there. So. Now, um, and I know this is, sounds a little bit like a silly question in some ways, but I'm sure there's a cost difference in buying prepackaged whatever it is and having to cook from really pure in ingredients mm -hmm. and really carefully chosen ingredients. Have you noticed any <laughs> difference? Yeah, there's a huge difference, uh -huh. but the biggest cost is in doctor's bills. Right, you know, and medicines, and medicines right. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a big difference, especially if you buy organic, which I recommend everyone does, right. because if you're buying conventional products, you're essentially buying poisons. Uh -huh. And there's a website you can go to called uh, ewg.org, it's mm -hmm. Environmental Working Group, mm -hmm. and they have the Dirty Dozen list. And mm -hmm. they tell you, they'll tell you on, on that website which, which, uh, fruits and vegetables has the most pesticides residue on it oh. and they'll also tell you the cleanest ones the ones that you can actually buy conventionally without harming yourself too much and I've heard that if it's got a thick peel you're safer than if it doesn't I don't know that that's true really? potatoes are one of the head one of the highest I was uh, thinking about bananas and things like that you know so I'm not sure where bananas fit mm -hmm. in there, and I'm mm -hmm. certainly not an expert on right. the subject, but uh, yeah. but you can find out from Environmental Working Group just what the most toxic and the least toxic uh, vegetables and fruits are that you can buy. Besides continuing to create fabulous recipes and enjoying those, what's the future for you? Well, I'm continuing to write cookbooks, I, and I just do this because I'm creating dishes and why mm -hmm. keep them to myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm doing I'm doing an Ethiopian cookbook right now. Ah. Uh, there are, as I mentioned before, ethnic groups are fantastic mm -hmm. for for foods, uh, for vegan foods. Mm -hmm. uh, Ethiopia has 170 days a year in, fasting days in which no animal products are allowed. So that's in their the, version of fasting. It's just no animal. Products. No animal uh -huh. products are allowed, and it's and and because it's encouraged by the church, people can go as long as 300 days a year with, without eating any animal products. And there's nothing wrong with that for their body. Right. right. Uh -huh. And so, so Ethiopian food is a natural fit for a vegan uh -huh. because they already have worked out these spices. A lot of these cultures have spices uh, that are similar to each other, like Indian and Ethiopian uh -huh. spices are very similar, but they use them differently. And it's because they were on the same spice trading right. routes. Mm -hmm. and, but they use them completely differently. And so these are complementary uh, uh, cuisines, mm -hmm. and I actually sometimes will use Indi e Indian, dish, Indian foods in my Ethiopian dish because it fits very well Interesting. and uh, but I've I've interviewed lots of Ethiopian chefs uh -huh. and I've had them invite me into their kitchen and to give me cooking lessons That's they've great. done yeah it's great and so and so I've I'm doing an Ethiopian mm -hmm. cookbook I'm also doing an Asian I was and gonna I, say what's after this one yeah, I'm, yeah. Doing, <laughs> I'm doing Ethiopian Asian uh, Indian and these are uh, separate little books yeah they're they're, se doing, they're uh -huh. separate small books mm -hmm. they're going I think they're just going to be e-books okay and I uh, and and I'm going very detailed step by step in how to do it so for the total novice they could actually learn how to do it that's right yeah. they could do it and mm -hmm. and that's true of time for change as well mm -hmm. I assume that that the person reading the book has zero experience in the kitchen that's a good thing to know because you know for those people who aren't secure about this or don't mm -hmm. feel like they're capable of cooking in this way or like you know I can tell you've cooked a lot and played a lot with it and so you, mm -hmm. there's a there's a comfortableness about your approach toward cooking, mm -hmm. 
that maybe isn't there for everyone. So Every time you go into the kitchen, you should consider that you're performing a scientific experiment. <laughs> you know? Sometimes they'll work out and sometimes not so much. I can remember a few of those experiments over the past <laughs> yes. But you are. You're, you're performing an experiment. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes they'll work out and sometimes they want, won't. And uh, don't worry about it. And you sometimes know, you do it what you thought was the same way you did it the last time and it still doesn't do the same thing. And the marvelous thing is that you'll have happy accidents. Where mm -hmm. you're, I do this all the time when I eat in a restaurant and say, oh my God, this was so good, I have to go home and make it myself. And I am not able to create, recreate it, but I come up with a recipe that's so good, I want to write it down right away uh -huh. and add it to my repertoire because you just have these marvelous, happy accidents. So that, you play in the kitchen and then uh -huh. if it's good, you write it down? Right. I, well, I write it down anyway. Okay. My husband has actually taught me to do that uh, because I say, now, how did I do that? And uh, so I write it down anyway. And, and if it yeah. turns out that it doesn't work out, then maybe I'll toss that one and say, right. okay, let's start you over. have a file of, don't do these. Yeah. Or this didn't work, don't do this again, you know. So, uh, yeah, but there are, are really fantastic dishes. I, I make a... Uh, a clam chowder. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a clam chowder. I call it New England clamless chowder. Clamless. Yeah, clamless mm -hmm. chowder. And uh, and it has the uh, creaminess mm -hmm. and the mouthfeel of eating clams. I use shiitake mushrooms. Uh -huh. And they look like clams. They have the chewiness of clams, but of course they don't taste like clams. But the, but the potato, you know, the rich creamy potato mm -hmm. stew uh, is very much like clam chowder. And I use cashew, cashews to make uh, a cashew cream, which thickens just like cream when you're cooking with it. And it's marvelous. So if you're a lover of clam chowder, you might very much like this. You would like this. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I took some, in, introduced a friend to it the other day, uh -huh. and he thought it had, he said, how did you make it taste fishy? And it was in his mind. It wasn't fishy at all. <laughs> but you can, if you really want it fishy, you can mm -hmm. add some seaweed in it and give it that fishy flavor. But I, I really don't want to try to reproduce foods that I've given up. Right. I'd rather just learn to like new foods. And okay. there's, there's mm -hmm. certainly plenty of delicious flavors out there. Yeah, and that's one thing I've noticed with a lot of diet changes people make is there are substitutes for something mm -hmm. as if you're trying to replicate the original taste. Right. And There's a lot of mm -hmm. faux meats out there mm -hmm. if you want it. Mm -hmm. To me, I, I call them mystery meats. <laughs> it's it's we fine. We call it that in grade school too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine if that's what you need to do uh -huh. to, for making a transition, but I think it should be a short-term goal instead mm -hmm. of a long-term yeah. because because they're really not whole foods. They're very processed. Well, it sounds like this truly is a lifestyle change. It is a lifestyle uh -huh. change, and it's a life-saving lifestyle mm -hmm. change. And I think uh, it's fascinating that you're taking your artistic personality and, and the creativity that's in you, and you're turning it into something in a totally new direction, but yet it's still creative. It yeah. is creative, and mm -hmm. it's fun. And it's and uh, never be afraid to ask questions. Mm -hmm. You know, I, one thing that we all have in common is that we eat. And people love to talk about food. Mm -hmm. They love to share recipes. Mm -hmm. When I go to a grocery store, I'm always looking in other people's baskets, and I say, hey, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> and they tell me, and they love sharing tips. I learned how to make tabbouleh, baba ganoush, and hummus, three Mediterranean dishes. Mm -hmm. I learned to make that from Saddam Hussein's personal chef. <laughs> really? I did. I did. <laughs> I was in a... Uh, <laughs> life has been traveling. <laughs> <laughs> Life is stranger than fiction. Uh -huh. I uh, had gone to a neighboring city from mm -hmm. where I live, and I uh, was buying a chair mm -hmm. I'd seen advertised. And the man who was selling me the chair was telling me about this delightful Mediterranean restaurant around the corner, which I had been to many times. I uh -huh. love that restaurant. And he told me that the chef had been Saddam Hussein's personal chef. I didn't believe that for an instant, mm -hmm. but you better believe when I was in there, I asked her, uh -huh, <laughs> you know, because uh -huh. it's a family-run run right. restaurant, and I asked uh, the, his daughter-in-law if, if it was true, and she says, oh, yes, for 20 years. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and so the family came over and started telling me about it. They showed me his ID for, that he used to get into the Saddam's palace. Wow. And he's a lo very lovely man. He was a Christian who uh, fled a a Iraq uh, mm. to escape religious persecution, and he opened this lovely little Mediterranean restaurant and it's one How of my favorite places to eat and he's very generous he shared with me a lot of his recipes uh, uh, you told me today that you discovered a new vegetable so now <laughs> next thing I'm expecting to see it on the blog as, as a new <laughs> yeah I've never tried I've never tried this recipe this vegetable before I was at Earth Fair mm -hmm. and they have this this uh 
green cauliflower looking thing only it's pointed is is a triangular shape and it really looks kind of like a seashell with all these little cones or a piece uh -huh. of coral reef or right. something with all these little cones coming out from around it and, it and it's kind of a lime green color and uh and i just thought it was interesting of course i had to buy it it's called what i think it's called roman ca cauliflower interesting so next you're going to tell us all what to do with that, right? <laughs> <laughs> we all figure something out. But uh, uh, it's, it's wonderful working with different uh, mm -hmm. cuisines, different mm -hmm. spice blends. When you get comfortable with it, you can try adding more grain, more of these things that you've never heard of. And the, and the more you get comfortable with things, the more you can add. Right. And mm -hmm. so it's really not daunting. You can start out with simple things. Like when I first started, I started with things like red beans and rice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I, and I'd throw some vegetables in with it. Or I would make pastas with, with uh, vegetable sauces mm -hmm. instead of meat sauces and a lot of veggie burgers or veggie sandwiches. Right. I had a, um, a uh, builder come over to my house, a, co a contractor, uh -huh. uh, because he was giving me an estimate on a sunroom that I wanted to make out of my little porch. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I gave him the job, and he and his son-in-law came over for two weeks. And so for two weeks, I fed them uh, vegan food. Uh -huh. Now, these are meat and potatoes guys. Mm -hmm. And I knew that Tom was Italian, so, I made, so the first thing I made for him was a calzone. And I stuffed it with a vegan ricotta cheese that I had made. Mm -hmm. And I put pineapple and mushrooms and uh, kalamata olives and... Uh, artichoke hearts and you know mm -hmm. roasted rail mm -hmm. just stuffed it full of wonderful mm -hmm. vegetables and he he and his uh, son-in-law um, just went crazy over this I'm trying to think of a son-in-law's name it just jumped out of my head um, but uh, they just absolutely went mm. nuts over it and so every day from then on they came into my kitchen first thing and said What's on the menu today? <laughs> and I fed them Indian dishes. And there was one particular, Harrison was his mm -hmm. son-in-law's name. And he's a 22-year-old kid. Uh -huh. And I made him a sandwich one day. And, uh, and it was a vegan sandwich. And it had all of these soft vegetables juxtaposed mm -hmm. with a crunchy... Uh, uh, fermented vegetables that I'd made. It was sweet and soft vegetables like, like beets and uh, sliced... Um, um, sweet potato and, and avocado, and then I put these crunchy sour vegetables on top. Interesting. It, it uh, sounds uh. bizarre, but it's really delicious. Mm -hmm. Those flavors meld, and it's wonderful, and I put it on a homemade uh, uh, whole grain bun. Uh -huh. And I watched Harrison eat that sandwich, and he shut his eyes, and he just savored every bite of it. And he told me, when I first saw that sandwich, I thought what it really needs is a huge chunk of meat and some cheese. <laughs> he said, but when I tried it, mm -hmm. I realized that would have just ruined it. It was so flavorful, he didn't miss the meat at all. How about that? And Tom mm -hmm. said, you know, I've always loved vegetables, but I never dreamed that vegetables could taste like this. And that's what we hear all, of, all the time. That's interesting. So. You know, when, you know, I don't just... It, it, tell people I don't cook meat, I just don't cook meat. Well, and you know, we have artist demonstrations mm -hmm. at the Blue Ridge Art Space, and you and right. I have talked about you coming and doing a demonstration. I'm going to do my clam chowder recipe. And what month did we pick? I think it's March. Oh, boy. I think so. Soon. I think it's March. <laughs> I think so. It's on my calendar, that but I can't remember. March the 14th. And so I'm not exactly sure, but I think I think it is. I March. think you may be right. Yeah. And so, boy, it's great that we know our calendars that well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you'd like to come in and meet Danielle and learn more about this, maybe get a copy of her book and also to try out something that she's talking about, that would be a great opportunity. That would be our second Saturday that we do every single month. And I encourage you to come and check it out. We're going to have some really interesting things going on that night in other ways as well. Also, while I'm mentioning uh, events of the Arts Council, let me caution you that due to all the recent snows, we've had a lot of schedule changes in workshops and classes. So the ones that will be happening after this date, don't worry about that's on schedule unless we get another snow. But the ones that should have happened before, you may not have missed because we may have had to postpone them. I know of one we've postponed, this will be the third time. So, you know, you don't know what the weather may have done to the schedule. So check our website, watauga-arts.org, and you can find information about the current things going on. And you can also find a link over to Danielle and learn about all the different things that she's doing. And Danielle, thank you so much for joining well, me. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. I'm looking <laughs> forward to, to this, this sampling opportunity. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> All right. And thank you for joining us. Again, check our website, watauga-arts.org, for information about this and a lot more. Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years.